In this week's Primetime Living, produced in partnership with the Maryland Department of Aging and its Maryland Access Point service, we're joined in the studio by Aaron Pesach, owner of Nutrition by Aaron. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Tell me about your practice. Who, who do you help? Sure. So I have a practice located out in Towson, and I see a variety of different types of clients, but primarily I work with weight management, metabolic syndrome, and gastrointestinal disorders. One, one of the tips uh, that, that you focus on is something I haven't heard before, the idea of a hunger scale. Yeah. What do you, what do you mean by that? Yeah, so I think sometimes we lose touch with why we're eating. Um, and so often people all day long, you know, they're craving food and they're always wanting something after they just ate and they're, they're not really in tune with their hunger. So there's a scale you can use on a scale of 1 to 10. And basically 1 would be, you know, rock bottom. You can't even stand up straight. You're about to pass out. You're so hungry. Your stomach's grumbling. And 10 is, you know, think of after Thanksgiving dinner. You're so full. You have to unbutton your pants. Okay. So somewhere in between, we should probably be about a three to a seven if we're trying to really make sure our hunger is in check throughout the day. And so not overfilling, but also not letting ourselves get too hungry. Unfortunately, very few Americans get down to a one. So, <laughs> I mean, how, how much are we eating just for something to do. Yeah, so that's that's a common question I ask people is, you know, what type of eating habits do you identify with? And so, you know, there's this combination of emotional stress or even boredom eating that's occurring all the time. And we've become a society that seems to be addicted to snacking. And so it's just eating all day long and never really getting to that point of, okay, maybe I am at like a three and I'm ready to eat a meal and feel satisfied. Instead, it's just constant, you know, grazing. So you should really think about it in those terms before you eat anything. How, how hungry am <laughs> I, am I really? Right, so it, it, it is tough to be mindful. Um, you know, we go throughout our day and we just do our daily routine. And when we eat, you know, we're often doing 10 other things at the same time. I know I'm victim of that too. And so it is hard to, to cue in with how do I feel right now and do I feel hungry am I feeling stressed um, am I just feeling overtired and I'm craving you know sugar to to boost up my energy so it is hard to be mindful but it's something that you can kind of tune into if you're more aware of it what one of your tips for making sure that people eat a, a balanced meal is to start with the veggies the non-starch veggies what, what's the idea Sure. So, um, you know, there's something called the plate method. Um, some people may be familiar with it. Right, but so basically, we're off the scale method. We're on to the plate <laughs> we're method. We're on the plate here, method, right. yeah. Um, so if you visualize, most people are eating off of a plate, which is cir circular. And if you cut that plate in half, you know, 50% of your plate should consist of non-starchy vegetables. Most people, it's an afterthought. Oh, yeah, I'll have a little, little bit of veggies on the side. But really, half your plate should be veggies. And so the concept of that is, you know, veggies are packed with nutrients, packed packed with fiber, low in calories, going to help to fill you up and also help keep your waistline down so you're not overeating some of the other more dense items. Is your suggestion to literally eat the veggies first or just think about it first in putting together a plate? I think the concept is more around when you're putting your plate together. Okay. Um, you know, there are some people um, who they opt to fill up first on their protein, which is fine as well. I don't think there has to be so much structure to it. But yeah, when you're filling up your plate, I think, you know, that top priority in your brain should be around the vegetables. And in terms of uh, what you drink with a meal, you have a glass of water in yes, front of you. Big fan. Water is recommended by everybody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's free, you know, it's, it's just what our, what our cells need and we stay hydrated. Um, you know, I think the one biggest thing I, I see people change that makes the biggest difference in how they feel and also on achieving their health goals is getting off any sugar or sweetened beverage. In, in terms of uh, older Americans, older Marylanders, mm -hmm. if, um, if you're in a, a setting where it's sort of an institutional food service, you're going to see a lot of fried foods. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's still the case, but it's easy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's something you like people to avoid. Yeah, yeah. That's another great, great switch that, that people can look for is, um, you know, I know they want to go and, you know, eat 
chicken and maybe eat a potato and maybe, you know, eat their veggies. But when the preparation method is, you know, soaking that in a batter that's maybe high in sodium, high in carbohydrates, then deep frying it in a highly inflammatory type of oil, um, then whatever once was healthy is no longer providing you with those health benefits. So, you know, I can't ask that it's an always situation, but for the most part, going out of their way to, you know, go more for grilled, broiled, sauteed, baked um, varieties, if, if that's the option. Yeah, and back to the veggies, same thing. If you, if you <laughs> coat it with a ranch dressing or whatever, right. there, there's better ways to do it. There is, but then the other thing to think about is if that gets you to eat it, you know, maybe that's a good place to start, right? I, I don't support that, but I think if, if you need to put some dressing, <laughs> you know, or, or some kind of a dip, if that gets you to consume it, then... Maybe you know. limit the portion a little bit. But, you got it, yeah. All right. Let's take a phone call. Cecil County, this is Derek. Derek, thanks for the call. Go ahead. What, what about the comparison between lima beans and asparagus as far as nutritional value and also the process of putting either margarine or real butter on each of those? Derek, thank you. Quick sure, answer on great that. great question. So uh, lima beans we consider uh, in the legume family, which would be more of a starch, um, versus the asparagus, which would be a non-starchy vegetable. So I think that they can both be at the meal, but they're serving different purposes. And then I'm a big fan of, uh, I'm kind of pro-fat, but the right kind of fat. So I'm really uh, not not crazy about the margarines. They often contain hydrogenated oils or highly processed oils. And I'm a bigger fan of you know doing some kind of a butter, uh, hopefully from grass-fed uh, cow's milk. Very good. Aaron mm -hmm. Pesach of uh, Nutrition by Aaron. Aaron, thank you so much. Thank you. Do appreciate it. Thank you for joining us for Direct Connection. We're back Thursday at this time with your money and business and join us Friday for State Circle. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. This program was made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities.